It's the end of the world as we know it. I feel fine. Good morning, slaves. In the wake of Trump's election, liberals and so-called progressives have been freaking the fuck out. What do you mean he won? Oh my god, we're gonna die! Why did Hillary try harder, dude? Why would she fuck up with the emails, man? <laughs> she deserves to be the first female president. And that's what makes me so sad. There's got to be a pony in this crap pile. As the cold realization of his imminent victory started to sink in on election night, I'm gonna grab a Xanax from the bedroom. Okay, will you grab me six? Yeah, I'm just gonna bring the whole bottle. Many of these peeps started scrambling for the escape pods. <sighs> I've gotta get out of here. I've gotta get out of here. In their unbridled haste to run away from the looming fight on their doorsteps, tens of thousands of Americans flooded the website of Immigration Canada. So many that they fucking crash its servers. Opposing Donald Trump doesn't really make you a political refugee. It makes you a Twitter user. The day after the election, a crowd at Cornell University gathered together for a so-called crying, while volunteers handed out Play-Doh, tissues, coloring books, and hot chocolate to a mass of people who were so stunned by the shattering of their social media-induced blinders that they literally fucking regress into childhood. <laughs> now. I can completely understand that millions of peeps are feeling scared, nervous, and upset. But if I can be real with y'all, this shit is some of the most pathetic and spectacularly self-indulging acts of collective fucking cowardice I've seen in my fucking life. Let's sincerely hope that this is a temporary phenomenon and that these peeps can get their shit together and start to deal with the challenging and urgent task at hand. Get it all together and put it in a backpack. All your shit, so it's together. Because despite what people might want to believe, this isn't a nightmare. It's real fucking life. This is us. This is our country. It's real. <laughs> Those Democrats who weren't attempting to flee the fucking coop or reduced to a quivering display of public sobbing were busy angrily pointing fingers at whoever didn't line up behind their own corrupt millionaire war criminal candidate of choice. I think you're the cause of all this. I think you're evil! EVIL! From the poor, non-college educated Trump voters that they looked down on as irredeemable and irrelevant white trash. I just think you're dumb, okay? I think you're fucking dumb. To so-called Bernie bros. Why couldn't I have attracted young female fans? To peeps who voted for third-party candidates, or those who, given the choice between two horrible options, decided not to vote at all. Anyone they could cast their blame at, in order not to have to take a long, hard look in the fucking mirror. Fuck me, fuck you. Because at the end of the fucking day, the liberal defenders of the status quo bear much of the blame for the state of affairs that created the movement that catapulted Trump and his corporatist cabal into power. From the DNC's Machiavellian media manipulation in support of Trump during the Republican primaries to their inevitable shafting of Bernie Sanders and the resulting disillusionment of his base of idealistic young voters. You're being ridiculous. The extreme arrogance of Hillary Clinton and her supporters and the whale oil machine of the Democratic Party came back to fucking bite them and all of us in the ass. Got bit in the ass today, son. I told you. I told you. You ain't tell me shit. It should come as no surprise that many of the smug, condescending liberals who are always telling anarchists and other radicals that using violence against Nazis makes us as bad as them are now taking Hillary's lead and tearfully accepting that there's nothing to do now but line up behind Trump and wait four years until peeps are giving another kick at the electoral can because that's how democracy works. Well, Fuck you. And fuck your bullshit democracy. From the Ferguson uprising to the courageous and ongoing land defenders at Standing Rock and every riot, blockade, protest in between, the motherfucking resistance has been fighting against the state and its oppressive security apparatus under Obama, and this resistance must now continue and intensify under President Trump. As white liberals are crying and soul-searching about how this could possibly happen to them, racialized peeps are being hunted and harassed in the streets by emboldened racists, drunk on their fascist champion's victory. The time is long past due for people to start getting serious about how to defend our communities from the onslaught of repression, because it's coming whether we're ready or not.